Welcome to Extreme Reloading. Hey, we're nearing the end of season number five, but we still got some pretty good stuff coming up, and this episode is no exception. What we're doing is we're going to be revisiting some of the 9mm loading that we did previously, and specifically, we're going to be performing some terminal ballistic testing with clear ballistics, ballistic gelatin. And in this episode, we have five specific 9mm Luger bullets that we're going to be running into the ballistic gel. It's not just hunting applications where terminal performance of a bullet is important. It's also extremely important in a self-defense bullet. And the five bullets that we're going to be using in this episode are the 115 grain Lehigh Extreme Penetrator, the 115 grain Hornady XTP, the XTP's big brother in 124 grain, the Sierra V Crown in 124 grain, as well as the Spear Gold Dot, also in 124 grain. All five of these bullets are part of our Extreme Bullets season, and the latter three were part of our Project 124. So before we head out to the range and do the terminal performance testing, let me recap how our pack test has gone so far. Now, by the way, pack is precision, accuracy, and consistency. In our 115 grain bullets, the Hornady XTP did really, really well, bringing in a 1.1 extreme spread on that five-shot group. However, the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator did a nice job in its consistency, giving us only 11 feet per second of standard deviation between all those rounds that we fired. Our Project 124 bullets really liked the Sierra V-Crown. The Sierra V-Crown gave us the best precision and the best accuracy. However, the Spear Gold Dot gave us the lowest standard deviation, winning the consistency part of our pack test with about 12 feet per second standard deviation. Now, while our pack test is done, we still have to tack on the T and make it into a full pack T test. And that's what we're doing today. Terminal performance testing in clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. And we're going to fire these things in the same order that we've just talked about them. Lehigh Extreme Penetrator, Hornady 115 grain XTP, Hornady 124 grain XTP, then we're going to fire the Sierra V Crown, and finally the Spear Gold Dot. Let's head out to the range and see how all this shakes out. I don't know about you, but I think shooting ballistic gelatin is kind of fun. It's really interesting to look at that bullet's path, that channel in the clear ballistic gelatin. And it's also really fun, I think, uh, to watch it in slow motion or super slow-mo. And so what I'd like to do, though, is spend a few minutes recapping how each of these bullets performed. And I'll do that in turn. Let's start with the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator. Well, I tell you, I was so amazed that that bullet zipped right through not just one of those 16-inch blocks, but both of those 16-inch blocks. 
32 plus inches of penetration. The wound channel, slowing it down and watching it frame by frame, that transient cavitation channel or TCC, really unimpressive. Very, very small, a little bit larger in the second block than in the first. But to be honest with you, I don't know why you would want this sort of bullet in a self-defense situation that is far too much penetration and then you have the possibility or potential of striking something or someone you don't want to hit with that bullet. In fact, I cannot think of a good application for that bullet. So let's move on to the 115 grain Hornady XTP. Now this bullet was sort of also not very impressive. It penetrated 8 inches, had some decent expansion, and uh, you know the mushroom doesn't look too bad, had about 88% of weight retention, that's not too bad. Um, one of the things I'll note about Hornady XTPs is they're sort of known notoriously or infamously for having clogged um, hollow point tips. In other words, if that bullet, before it even starts to mushroom, if it first hits something that clogs that hollow point, it'll simply fail to expand. We did not see that simply because everything that this thing hit was soft. The ballistic gelatin essentially was, was soft tissue or emulated soft tissue. I did some tests oh, a couple years ago, I think, um, and I actually did see that where the um, XTPs clogged and failed to expand. So overall, it didn't do bad, but it didn't really stand out as, wow, that's an impressive bullet. Not at all. Now, the second XTP bullet did quite a bit better. We had 99% weight retention. It expanded a little bit more than 150%, and we had about a 12 and a half inch penetration. That's good. Very, very nice. And that TCC, or transient cavitation channel that we captured uh, by going through frame by frame on that slow motion video, revealed a pretty impressive looking channel. So that did not do too bad. And now the Sierra V-Crown. This bullet came in more or less leading everything in the pack test, and boy was this ever impressive. 99% weight retention, almost 180% expansion, and 14 inches of penetration. And that was also a very impressive TCC. It's almost reminiscent of a high-powered rifle round inside that gelatin. Extremely large and impressive uh, wound channel there. And boy, I tell you, Sierra has developed a fantastic bullet in this V-Crown. Last but not least is the legendary Spear Gold Dot. Also 99% weight retention, 160% expansion, and a nice 11 inch penetration. The wound channel, pretty darn nice also. A little bit different. It made that very large balloon effect, uh, but we didn't see that kind of traditional shape. Uh, it could have been that the camera just didn't pick it up even on slow-mo or high speed like that. Um, but nonetheless, it's not quite as impressive of a wound channel or TCC uh, as we were seeing in the others. Still a very good bullet without a doubt. So you know for a self-defense situation, those 115, well the 115 grain XTP was pretty much not very impressive. The 124s look pretty good. Uh, and if I was going to make a choice of what I would use in my 9mm, I would go with the uh, Sierra V-Crown. I can reload those bullets. You can get them over the counter. 
uh, in, a, uh, in a gun shop. Um, excellent choice, and we haven't seen any problems with it throughout all of our testing. You know, I had the opportunity to look at a lot of different angles of, of this test. And what, one thing that was interesting is that all of the bullets ended up with the base oriented in kind of an odd direction. So I think what was happening is that bullet is entering into that gel, traveling nice and straight through that gel. We could see it's traveling nice and straight, and then as it's really, really slowing down, it does a little tumble. And, uh, and so I saw the, the base of the bullets, you know, oftentimes uh, sitting in an odd direction. Nothing to worry about, I would say. Uh, we saw the results in the ballistic gelatin, very impressive stuff in many, many cases. Once again, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this or your comments on this. What do you think about these bullets, especially the Project 124 bullets? And maybe you've used a bullet that I didn't test here in 9mm or in 45 ACP or something like that. If you'd like to see us do a test with another bullet, just put that into the comments and we'll see if we can get to it. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading. We'll be back with a season wrap-up in just a couple weeks.